Am I the idiot? For telling my wife that I'm tired of raising a kid that isn't mine? I 31 am am married to my wife Amber 30 f we have a daughter Emma 7 f the problem is my wife's best friend Jennifer 30 f has a daughter as well Harper 7 f well Harper's dad is a lazy sack of crap and refuses to do anything with his daughter. He is the type of guy that brags about how he never changed a diaper. Jennifer and Harper are usually at Amber and my house on the weekends because Harper's dad is drinking and watching sports all weekend. On Saturdays I normally spend all day with my daughter because I don't see her as much as I want to during the week. However with Harper being there every Saturday anything I do with Emma I have to do with Harper. Take Emma to the zoo at Emma, Harper and I taught them both how to ride bikes, takes them both to dance class, take them both to the kids salon, and so on. Mother's Day was the last draw. I took them both to dance class Saturday morning Amber and I also pay for both dance classes because deadbeat won't on the way home Emma asked if we could stop to get something for mom for Mother's Day, I said sure but then it ended up I had to buy something for Harper to her mom as well. On the way home I just kept thinking why am I buying someone else's wife a Mother's Day gift, that's his job. A few days later because I did not want to ruin Mother's Day I told my wife that I am tired of raising Harper, her real father needs to step up. I tired of it taking away time I get to spend with Emma. She said that Jennifer is her best friend and we need to be there for Harper. Now she is not speaking to me and sleeping in the guest bedroom. So am I the idiot? Just wanted to add some updates to questions I see. Emma and Harper are best friends. It was my idea to spend Saturday with Emma. I work more during the week so I wanted to spend Saturday with Emma and to give my wife a bit of a break. We pay for things B. Jennifer's husband thinks it's a waste on money to pay for dance class and Jennifer can't afford to pay by herself. Jennifer and Harper do things with Amber and Emma one or two times a week together during the weeknights. Comments comment one where's Harper's mom in all this? Original poster just hanging out at our place, Harper started to come along because I thought it would be mean to take her friend and not her. At the start it was not all the time like it is now comment too so your wife probably enjoys hanging out child free with her friend every weekend. If your wife doesn't agree to friend free days maybe the mom should start needing to attend the outings too? I don't understand why Harper's mom isn't at least driving kids to dance since you paid etc. Original poster our house is on the way to dance, so she comes here first. I also like going to dance, it's kind of fun being the only dad there, and after class we have our routine of going to the local bakery and getting a croissant and smoothie for breakfast. Comment 3 are the gift and things you spend on her getting paid back to you? Original poster the short answer is no. The longer version is Amber and I make a decent amount more money than Jennifer and her husband and her husband does not like to waste his money on the kid. Jennifer cannot afford to pay us back, so any money I spend on her kid I know we are not getting back. Comment 4 7 years in, you've set the expectation and Harper is not going to understand your withdrawing. So hmm. For taking 7 years to decide this was an issue. Original poster I see what you're saying but it's gradually gotten to this point over 7 years. Part of it is she is here more now than when she was younger, part of it is as Emma has gotten older we do more involved things. When they were 3 we just went to the playground down the street now it's trips to the science center. Comment 5 You should definitely have a talk with this sorry excuse of a father, if anything just to tell him what you think of him original poster I would but he is not the civil discourse type of guy, but more of the alpha male beat you up type of person. Comment 6 Why do you pay for her dance classes? Why can't either of Harper's parents do it? Original poster I pay for the classes because Emma wanted Harper in class with her. Harper's father is the type of who is my money is my money and Jennifer's money is their money and he does not want to waste money on classes. Update 1 2 weeks later so quite a few people has asked for an update on this situation. Sorry it's taken so long but it's been a hectic few weeks. As for the updates the Amber and I are fine. Her reaction was based on poor word choices by me poor communication by both of us, and some things I was unaware of at the time. The short version is things at home were much worse than I was aware of for Jennifer, and my wife had only recently found out how bad things were. Mother's Day was the straw that broke the camel's back for Jennifer as well. She was raised in a you must stay together for the kids family. When Harper came to me for a gift she realized that her daughter did not see her sperm donor as a father so it was time to get out. Jennifer came to my wife to ask for help leaving because she had no family in the area and Jennifer does not have the financial resources to leave on her own. So the night my wife was going to ask me if we could help her is when I told her I was tired of raising someone else's kid. That's what caused her reaction. The Saturday after our initial argument Jennifer did not come over and Emma went to her grandparents, so the wife and I had a long discussion about what was going on. That's when I found out all the stuff going on with Jennifer. The wife and I decided that Jennifer and Harper can stay with us for the time being. My problem was never with us two it was that I had to take over for the deadbeat or deadbeat if you prefer. When we told Emma about this she was super happy her friend was staying with her. 
We had a conversation with her that if she wants to have time with either parent without Harper just let us know, and we do not want her to feel left out of anything. Last weekend with the help of Hall and some friends of mine we got all of Jennifer's and Harper's stuff and moved it into our house. The good thing is we have a four bedroom house so everyone gets a bedroom, the bad news is my wife's office got moved to the basement. Wish me luck we shall see how this goes. Up to so it's been almost a year since my last update but with Mother's Day upon us I thought I would post an update and try to answer the questions I've gotten. Jen and Harper are still living with us. As I mentioned before Jen did not make that much money, she worked as a phlebotomist for our local health network. The good news is with the current nursing shortage they have a program where they will pay for employees to go to nursing school. She was able to start that in the end of August. The bad news is it's an 18-month program and they only let you work 20 hours a week while you are in the program. So the arrangement is once she graduates she will move out then. That should be next May. The divorce with Deadbeat is still ongoing. Once he found out he was going to have to pay child support he tried every dirty nasty trick he could think of. No idea when that will be finished. My wife is doing good, she happy she is helping her best friend, but five people in a house is a lot more work than three. Since she works from home the pre and post school work falls on her. Emma and Harper are still best friends. Shockingly Harper is doing much better in this environment than before. They don't do everything together anymore. Harper quit dance class, but she started with soccer. I think knowing that she will get fatherly attention no matter what she is doing has given her some freedom to pursue other interest. Harper has turned into my Lego buddy. Emma never had any interest but Harper and I have done some nice sets together. Emma and I still have our daddy-daughter dates on the weekend, I still take her to dance class, and she started to take fencing classes. I don't know if I should be proud or scared that she could defeat me in a sword fight. I think I am doing better a year later. That there is a plan with a timetable for Jen and Harper has relived a lot of stress from my life. That I also don't have to see deadbeat has also been a relief. I also try to take a few hours a month for me time and to do my hobbies. The bad part is I had thought that I was done with the portion of my life where I had roommates. It will also be nice when Jen either gets her nursing job and or gets child support so that Amber and I can stop footing the bill for so much. For all the people that said Jen was going to become our sister wife, or that I was going cheat of my wife with her, or that she was going to ruin my marriage out of spite, or any of the weird intimate fantasies some of you people had absolutely nothing has happened. I 30f told my boyfriend 30m I was sa after watching Baby Rainier. He got angry at me and now our relationship is over. Hi Reddit, so sorry for the long post but I feel so broken and like I've regressed 8 years. Trauma dumb. I'm looking for advice. I just don't want to share it with my best friends because they'll just tell me what they think I want to hear. I've been trying not to vomit all day, and inward, from how overwhelmed I feel. Am I overreacting really badly, and not being fair? I 30F have been in a relationship with my BF 30M since January 2023. We have our disagreements, and there's been maybe two handfuls of fights about them. They usually stem from differences of opinions. Other than that we get along really well. I'm a sensitive person and very empathetic, although I try to manage it myself, I can feel deeply hurt and sometimes when I do, maybe I blow it out of proportion in my head and take drastic measures. Or maybe I just gaslight myself, I truly don't know. He can at times, find it difficult to see things from people's perspectives and struggle to empathize with others. Saturday night we had a good day, and I went back to his house. Last week we started Baby Reindeer my suggestion, we normally don't watch things like this together. Spoiler by episode 2 he was struggling to empathize with the protagonist, feeling like he wasn't cutthroat and assertive enough with her, and not understanding why he didn't report her for harassment or why he was nice to her. I tried to explain it to him, he understood it more but still felt he was making a lot of mistakes, and he said he couldn't understand him because he'd never act that way. He thought the protagonist was weak. Then episode 4 comes around. We only got maybe one three-way through it, and when the protagonist goes back to his house for the second time, my BF got incredibly angry. Angry at the abuser, and to my surprise, at the guy. Said he was reckless, that he didn't think logically, that he made a huge mistake, that he put himself in that situation. I tried to explain that he felt safe returning as he had been groomed to believe the abuser was a nice guy, and that he could be trusted because when he asked him to stop and screamed no, he did. I agreed that he made a stupid mistake going back to his house, but that he truly did trust him. My boyfriend rejected this and said it's all excuses, that the first time was absolutely not his fault but making the decision to return was, and that he just wanted to be successful at any cost, that he knew this was about to escalate and whatever would happen to him, he deserved it. I was shocked, appalled and disgusted. I truly couldn't believe it and I told him how evil and horrible it was. It was night time, 
he left to go on a walk and get fresh air and as soon as he came back, I left to go downstairs as I was still too disgusted to speak. I didn't want to sleep next to him on his single bed, and honestly couldn't, so I stayed up all night until about 5 am while he slept, and then he finally convinced me to get some sleep. He woke up maybe four times before that throughout the night to check up on me, told me he regretted what he said, said it out of anger and shock, and that no one, absolutely no one deserves it, not even the abuser who did it would deserve to be essayed as payback. He told me he's not a demon or evil, he was just too angry. The next day was rough, we went to the park but I barely interacted with him. He must have been bewildered and just thought she's just sensitive and thinks I'm evil egg. He did try to lighten the mood a bit but I just couldn't feel any happiness, and I was so tired from staying up secretly crying and only sleeping 3 hours or so. According to him, I looked like a vampire and my eyes were dead and sunken. Late afternoon we went back to his again, and he asked me to take a small nap before leaving as I really needed to rest my busy mind, so we did. After we woke up he said he didn't want me to go home overthinking things or feeling wrong about him, he said he knew I was still angry. I was lying on his arm, and he repeated what he said in the middle of the night, how wrong he was for what he said, how he should have never said such a stupid horrible thing. I explained I found it hard to believe he had changed his mind. And then I told him about me. I told him not every essay is like what people think of, a stranger hiding in a bush, that I've been essayed on two separate occasions. Once as a child which I said very quick and said I didn't want to talk about, and once as an adult. I told him I was 22, I had a somewhat new colleague who I trusted few months working together, I thought we were friends. He had built an image of a nice, albeit arrogant and overly confident guy, who loved his grandfather and family. In work, we were all very close and used to go out together dancing and drinking, and at the time I was recovering from my first relationship a few months prior first guy I was ever with, cheated on me with his ex gaslighted me and everyone around me into believing I was going crazy, pretended he'd suicide if I left him, the whole shebang, for 9 months. I was too worried I'd be the reason he'd die, and stayed to my own detriment. Really stupid. So months after the breakup I was pretty vulnerable but absolutely not wanting anything with anyone. I didn't do hookups or kiss strangers, it wasn't and has never been my thing. I'm a bit old fashioned with intimacy, only wanting to share some parts of me in a relationship. I was pretty naive had only ever been intimate with my ex and saw the best in others. Needless to say, this guy must have smelled it off me from a mile away. And as I was the only girl in work who wasn't giving him attention as I honestly had sworn off men for a while, and he was a narcissist, he OFC, wanted the unavailable girl. He kissed me maybe three x altogether, over the space of a few weeks, I'd quite I allowed it, I guess it felt nice to feel wanted. But I was always quite drunk, 53 kilograms lightweight and it was just a kiss, singular each time nothing else, and on the dance floor, he'd always get me shots but it not just for me, for everyone so still, like an idiot, I didn't think anything of it. We'd all get taxis home together as a group but I live in the deep south of the city, and was always the last person left in the taxi. A taxi to mine back then was about 60 euros 70, and I'd usually be the one to fork it all out because everyone was gone by then, and drunk people never remember to pay their half, and I lacked a backbone. Without noticing, it started being mostly just him and I getting a taxi together. I never questioned it because, we were mates, and there was always loads of us so we'd be split up anyway, and his house was in my direction. So this was his inn. One of the taxi drives home, he spent the whole journey convincing me to stay in his. That his ma'am was there she never was but she'd be asleep, that I'd end up paying the full taxi money myself if I didn't, and even if we split it would be a lot and that it wasn't safe for a drunk girl to be left alone in a taxi with a random man driving up to near the mountains where I lived. First I insisted on going home, but he promised me and reassured me he wouldn't touch me and nothing would happen. His man was home after all. So after maybe 15 minutes of convincing, my drunk self caved in. I went to his, and suddenly the living room was no longer an option to sleep in, as he had a big dog who didn't like strangers. So it had to be his room. Foolishly, up I went, to hide again from this scary bad thing that he would keep me away from. OFC he thought my no would turn into a yes and tried to kiss me, but I told him no, that I didn't want absolutely anything to happen and I just wanted to sleep. He respected it. He didn't even grope me, we just slept. So when the second and third time taxi situation happened, and he told me to stay in his, I felt safe. But unfortunately, as these things often go, I wasn't, and he essayed me. It feels weird using that word, I rarely call it that. The thing that I can't get over the most is I know it only happened on one of those two nights, but I don't know which one for sure. I'd like to believe it was the third night. I asked him to stop, tried to reason with him at first, pleaded, tried to fight him off me, 
and he just said no means yes over and over, while I was pinned down. I went numb after a while of trying, froze up, and then something happened, and I somehow got the strength to topple him off me. He had me pinned down completely full body weight on my legs, rugby player so muscle heavy, and hands pinned down but I somehow got my legs freed from under him after a few minutes. I was quite drunk and honestly in shock, and since I was a child I've disassociated in traumatic experiences. So I turned to the wall, my forever comfort place, and I just, I'd, remember him coming up behind me and hugging me telling me he'd never do anything to hurt me and shushing, I remember thinking in my head that you just did, not moving, not crying and holding my breath. And then I knocked out. I'd what happened after, I'd if he did anything else. I'd how I got home. I don't know much of anything for the next few months. I didn't even know I was S8 until 6 months later. My brain completely repressed the memory. I know how that sounds, I really do, but it really did. I disassociate sometimes, it would happen as a child too especially when my dad used to beat me, it's how I'd manage not to cry, I'd just go physically numb. This time it was my body after a while, and my mind too. I only remembered because he, the guy, jokingly accused another colleague of fondling him, and this colleague was deeply upset and told me. And it just slowly started coming into frame for me. Blurry, at first but when I sat my best friend down to tell him that I had something to tell him, it was the first time I processed it, six months later. And it was like it had suddenly happened yesterday, I could still feel it, smell the bedroom, him, everything. I can't even begin to describe the whirlpool of emotions that came with it, especially six months after it. And it was just all flashbacks. Up until that moment I couldn't understand why smelling his cologne or being around him and work and standing close to him made my heart speed up really fast. I couldn't understand why when a girl I worked with mentioned her friend was interested in him but got a creepy vibe off him, I immediately told her to be careful. I just couldn't understand any of it, I thought I was developing feelings for him, surely this always what heart flutters are about. Yet I didn't feel it, but it wasn't that, and when I did remember I can't even explain that year, how badly I processed it, the sheer self-hatred, the sheer victim blaming from myself to myself, the everything, the suicidalness, the self-starvation, my original content got out of control, the weed abuse, the manic episodes, the anger and shame and worthlessness. And he had been working with me the entire time telling me occasionally, that no means yes, right? Your mouth can say no, and your body can say no. But it's always a yes and he'd laugh and I'd argue if a girl says no it's no, but even that didn't ducking trigger the memory back and I never ever thought he was talking about me. I still struggle with self-hatred about this sometimes. And when I shared all this with my boyfriend he got so angry again at the guy, for being a bastard and he just couldn't get over the fact he got away with it with no punishment. The first thing he asked me was what did I do about it? And why didn't I report him? I said I didn't want to ruin his life and I tried to explain, how could I report him, I had no proof. Duck I hadn't even had proof of convos with my friends freaking out the next day because those convos never happened as I blocked it all from my mind and my brain went on a 6 month slumber party. I couldn't do a rape test. And I felt like what right do I have to do anything when I didn't even remember it? When it was my fault. I really believed that for so long. At the time there was a very heavily reported case of a woman who was essayed under very similar circumstances but had proof unlike me, and I still remember how half of my friends reacted, half of the country slut shamed her. The toxin work that they'd have, that he'd partake in. How they passed her underwear around the court as evidence she was asking for intercourse as no one wears lacy underwear on a night out. As I was telling him all of this he didn't console me, not like how you'd expect a boyfriend does in that situation, hug you tight and tell you it's okay. Instead he stopped holding me and sat up on the bed, he was really struggling to process it all, face in his hands, and anger just building. He's not normally an angry person btw, he doesn't struggle with it. I think he does struggle with processing negative emotions so it comes out as anger first. I know because I do this too. He was in completely disbelief. I tried to keep my cool, tried to be detached from that memory and emotionless, and act like it's okay, I grew stronger from it and am over it. I said all of that, I was masking which is a coping mechanism for me, to make me feel more in control, like I'm stronger than I am, and to try take some sort of positivity from negative experiences. He said he was sorry that he triggered it all back that he understood why I couldn't sleep, that I stayed up reliving it all because of him, that he had caused it. I said it's okay, and he seemed so angry at himself. I said that it took me many years to forgive myself, and that in the process I had to forgive him. This made him even angrier. He said this guy destroyed my mental health and how could I forgive him or forget? He got so angry at the guy, so angry at the fact he got away with it, 
told me how he probably laughed at me in work and told the others in work I didn't care about what he had done and just accepted everything was fine and went on about working with him. But he was in disbelief at my naivety. He told me some things are basic, that if a man and a woman are in the same bedroom together, same house even, drink or no drink but especially drink he's never been drunk before so has no idea how it can impact your judgment that it's a basic thing to expect, that intercourse will happen. He said it should never be forced, that he's a bastard, but that I should have known it was a setup and that he was plotting it all. He said none of it was my fault, that I should not blame myself. He said this a few times but I, it just didn't feel like warm or loving. He went for a walk to clear his head, he really was struggling, this hurt me because he didn't even properly address my emotions, at least that's how I felt. And then he came back. I asked him what he thought of me, he said it's not important what anyone thinks. The important thing is what I think of myself finally gave me a longish hug and that I had to stop being angry at myself. I told him it's important for me to know, and he said that I made a stupid mistake from lack of experience going back to his house. That it wasn't my fault, that I needed to forgive myself and that he hoped I had but that he was angry at younger me for making a mistake and being stupid. Up until that point I had told him multiple times I didn't care what he or anyone thought of me, because I had forgiven myself. But wow, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I couldn't believe it I just kept saying wow. I masked the fact I was about to break down sobbing, and OFC got angry instead. I told him again, that he lacks empathy I had said it earlier, that he's cold, that how could he say that after I had just shared something that affected me so deeply, that I don't normally tell anyone. He continued saying I'm not listening to him, that it's not my fault, that I just made a mistake and was stupid then. He asked me how a normal boyfriend is supposed to react in this situation and I told him how my ex reacted. The only other ex I told, he consoled me, made me feel safe, that it's okay, and just hugged me, didn't once get angry at me because it never even crossed his mind that it should. I got so angry, got up to leave and said obviously there's nothing between us anymore, good luck and as I stormed out of the room I told him that I know he doesn't love me, but that I couldn't believe he didn't even care about me, that it's like he didn't even like me, that even a stranger would show more empathy than my own boyfriend. He got up to walk me to the bus as per usual, and I told him not to come so he instead went for a walk to clear his mind. And then as I walked away the anger turned into just crippling sorrow and I felt like I regressed back to the victim blaming, self-hatred shame that I felt about myself 8 years ago. It's not been a safe space in my mind, and I know I reacted so poorly but no one had ever said the words I had told myself for years, to my face, much less a boyfriend. He hasn't texted me, it's been a day now. I haven't texted him. Normally if we have a big falling out we give each other space for a few days but I'd, this might be different. He deleted me off Steam second time he's done this, the first time he did it a year ago and admitted it was because seeing me come online hurt him and made him feel too low but not off on Instagram or his phone, or Discord. I know his personality, he's angry at the guy, me, and I think maybe himself for the night before, for triggering me, and I'd, if for how he reacted to what I told him. And I also know that, he's always said, when he knows he hurt someone badly he deeply cares about. He does the cowardly thing and removes himself from their life altogether, because he knows they deserve better and a sorry won't fix anything, he doesn't deserve to be forgiven. And I'd, I guess that was the last time we'll ever speak again and I'm having a really rough time coping with that thought, and all of this, I thought I had healed, but I'm completely shattered, and feel so alone. My anger has turned into so much sorrow, and I guess I wish he'd text me. I'm just all over the place, but determined to not be the one to break the silence. It's not about pride. I'm just tired of having to say sorry to people who hurt me, or ask for a sorry from them. Peas. A month after remembering my behavior started to change towards the guy. I think he realized something was off with me and another girl who was my second best friend at the time who I told. He requested a transfer to another restaurant. Before he left, I sat him down in the back of our workplace and for an hour and a half told him exactly who he is, and what he did, and what would happen if he went near any of the girls in work. He pleaded innocent by claiming he didn't recall that he was drunk this isn't true, and that he would feel better if I punched him.